Well, it's your brother Malcolm coming at you with another lesson in truth. Giving all praises, glory, and honor unto Yahweh Bashem Yahweh whom I worship. Double honors unto the apostles and the elders of GMS, who are the true leaders of all Israel on earth today. All right. And salutations to my uh, fellow laborers. You know, my brothers that are doing this work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and their freedom to do so. All right. Also to the confusion of faith brothers that are joined among us and, and fighting a good fight. To you, I say Shalom. All right. And also to the few Akwaf that are actually listening and learning. Um, this is just going to be a response. That's yeah, good. To the uh, video that uh, Apostle Tahar did. On uh, how to make a Christian run. So really, it was an excellent video. And he went into the whole, you know, he went into Genesis, the 37th chapter and the 35th uh, uh, verse. Um, just to prove the point that the hell doctrine is, is a false doctrine. Just like everything about Christianity is false. All right. Everything about it, you know. And uh, Including the people who claim to be Christians, because the only way you can be a Christian is if you're an Israelite. And the Israelites on earth today are the Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, and those of them that are scattered among the other nations. Not the people of the other nations themselves, but our people who are scattered among them that look like them. Okay? And that is the, what the Bible tells you from beginning to end. But yet, they somehow magically... Uh, take the people that was clearly melanated people and make them pale and then they come up with all these fantastic lies that can't be backed up by scriptures or precepts and they've used it as a weapon to rule over people for so long but you know we're going where we the men of gms and uh, and our brothers who teach the likewise doctrine are here to show that you are wrong uh, okay so with that uh let's just go into some scriptures the first one is uh jonah 2 and 20 all right and I'm and at the end of this, you know, it's gonna be quick. I'm gonna show you what they all these scriptures have in common. All right, but this is Jonah two, and and not two and twenty two and two. And uh, actually, I'm gonna start at verse one. Then Jonah prayed unto Yahweh his power out of the fish's belly. And by the way, I saw a fish that they pulled a uh, somewhere out of Russia. They pulled some fish out of the water that was almost three thousand pounds. It was like twenty seven hundred. Uh, uh, pounds so and, and it was large and it could have easily swallowed a man all right and it was a fish with scales okay so uh but anyway just to make that point but it says then jonah prayed unto the yahweh his power out of out of the fish's belly and and said i cried by reason of mine affliction unto yahweh and he heard me out of the belly of hell cried i Thou heardest my voice. And there also was uh, a couple of uh, uh, deep sea divers that did an experiment. And one stayed in an air pocket underwater uh, uh, for, I think, for three or four days. All right. Which would have been an easy thing for the Lord to have Jonah be in this fish's belly for, you know, for a certain period of time before the fish vomited him up. Before he actually was uh, digested and all that other sort of thing. Okay. So anything is possible with the most high but this scripture they're actual factual physical events like the two i just mentioned that prove that this was beyond possible to happen okay so the next scripture uh let's go to the one that uh, actually we're right we're close to amos so we'll go ahead and grab it uh this is amos uh chapter 9 and verse 2 though they dig into hell all right then shall my hand take them. Though they climb up to heaven, this will I bring them down. So, you know, I guess you had a you know a couple men that just dug in the hell, peeped in, saw hell, and decided to uh skid out skedaddle, right? Okay. To th you know, the the thought process of you people is just come clear and utter madness, man. So the key words in both those scriptures was hell. Alright? In Jonah, the word there was hell. All right, and Amos, the word that was hell. Now, let's go to Genesis. Uh, actually, let's go to Psalms 30 and 3. So, we're going to scoot on over to Psalms. Uh, 
30 and verse 3. I'm going to just highlight that. Let's make the little mark there. Okay. Now, this is a different word. But this is the, the reason why. This is also a cut on all you false bootleg Hebrew Israelite camps, man, that, that especially ones that teach how you, you should be able to prove your doctor, doctrine with English. Well, I'm proving in this, in this, in this, uh, in this educational, biblical educational sit down, this edification, that that is not so, that that is a lie. Anyone teach teaching on that is a false prophet, a liar, and scared of the truth, or they're trying to make money. All right. But this is our Psalms 30 and 3, and it says, O Yahweh, thou hast brought me up Brought, brought up my soul from the grave. Thou hast kept me alive that I should not go down to the pit. Okay? So, the word there is grave. The first two scriptures, the word was hell. All right? Okay? So now let's go to the scripture that the apostle brought out, which was Genesis 37. Okay? And uh, 35. Okay. Okay. And it reads, just making a mark there. And all his sons and all his daughters rose up um, to comfort him. But he raised, but he refused to be comforted. He said, for I will go down into the grave unto my unto my son mourning. Thus his father wept for him because this Joseph had just you know the uh, the other the other eleven patriarchs had just fabricated a story to our forefather Jacob that Joseph was dead and and he clearly loved Joseph uh, specially. Not that he didn't love his other sons, but he had a special love for Joseph and it it, it hurt him really bad, man. Joseph being the forefather of Ephraim and Manasseh, by the way, who happened to be the so-called Puerto Ricans and the Cubans. Just so if you're new to watching this. All right. So the word there was grave. So let's see what these words have in common, which is why reading the English is not going to just reading the scripture, uh, um, you know, in either the English or the or, or whatever language your Bible is in. You have to go into the original tongues to understand it which also happens to be what the Bible is talking about when it says speaking in tongues. It actually means other languages, not obedi shoba ba 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 and all that crazy mess that they do in these uh, American churches, man. All right, that you see them doing on TV and all that madness. Speaking in another tongue means you're actually speaking another language like Japanese, Chinese, Spanish, French, Latin, and that, that sort of thing. But what these words all have in common is that in the Hebrew, even though one said hell and one said grave, the uh, the number there was 7585 in the Hebrew. All right. And this is coming out of the Strong's Concordance. OK. And it reads Sha'al. OK. And. Uh, the grave, the hell, the pit. All right. From from 7592 Hades or. The word of the dead as if subterranean. All right. Uh, it's accessories and inmates. Grave, hell or pit. So if you're in a fish's belly, you're not you're not in, in a grave, nor are you in hell. You're in a condition. You're in a horrific condition. OK. That's what you're in. So hell is a condition, not a place. OK, is it as simple as it is as simple as that? All right. And, then, and like Apostle Tahar said, they don't want to answer that question. They run from it. So with that, hey, all praises, glory and honor be unto you. How about you? How was shy? And shalom.